In two previous videos, we explored using materials as ways to animate or at least simulate visual animations, and we also tried to use different materials for randomizing colors in spline meshes. Although the performance increase was quite substantial, all the flies are flapping their wings at the same identical rhythm. It's very uncanny and quite unusable for actual games. To address this, we explored using randomness as a YouTuber commenter suggested, all true 19. The results were quite pleasing, and we'll get into how we used it and how to tweak it. So let's check it out. So the node itself is called per instance random. Now at a first glance, when we actually go into the literature, there is almost no information whatsoever about it. We know that it can result into some random value between zero and rand max. And based on our test, it seems to be between zero and one. So if we take a quick look at it, originally we had time, frequency, multiply, and then we made it into a signed function, so it's cyclical. And then we multiplied it by the angle amplitude, and we made a rotation about axis. The modification that you'll have to do is simply to add a per instance random and simply add it to the time. And we don't need to do anything else. So this will create a slight offset and everything else will work as intended. Now, it's very important that you always select the instance and not the original material. Because only the instances will have different values, whereas the original material will not. As we can see, each fly is flapping their wings in a non-synchronous manner. The second way we implemented variation is in these instant static meshes. So in the previous video, we concluded that only the spline mesh component could have color variation or randomization as seen here. We can move it around and it will always change colors. However, when we tried with ISMs and HISMs, we couldn't do it, at least not using instanced uh, materials. So we figured out a way to overcome it using this randomization by creating a singular material that will generate random colors. So we developed three methods. All of them involve something similar to using the if function in materials and checking if the value is lower, greater, or equal than a specific cutoff. The end result will look something like this. So let's take a look at the material. So the first method we'll be looking at is the pure zero to one method. This method involves using a simple if comparison node over and over again and nesting it and comparing what happens when A and B are greater or lower than each other. This is because random values are generated between zero and one. The main issue we encounter is that the per instance random is deterministic. This means that the progression of values produced by the per instance random will always be the same. So if you're using it to color different lines of boxes spread throughout your level, the lines of boxes or the splines of boxes will all have the same color in the exact same order. As such, we had to improvise and add what we call the modifier. In this case, int modifier. In our main construction script, the int modifier is randomly generated using a branch and we generated a number between zero and a thousand. And then we change the int modifier parameter name in the dynamic material instance, as seen here. We thought about only using the modifier instead of the per instance random node, but unfortunately it did not produce any new numbers. As such, per instance random and the int modifier had to exist together in the same material. Next, we divided that int modifier by a thousand and added it to the per instance random. So the reason we did this step here is because we're using the same int modifier for the other methods uh, and we didn't want to put a zero to one again. Uh, we add them together. So we have something between zero and one and another thing between zero and one, add them together. And then we do a first if to check is a greater or equal or lower than 0.5. If it's lower, uh, go this way. If it's higher, go that way. Next, we did the exact same thing, but with 0 0.25 and 0 0.75. Now, since we're adding uh, something between zero and one to something that is already between zero and one, you can kind of see that it might create some form of bias. 
uh, especially towards greater values. As such, you can tweak this sort of value or the int modifier itself to achieve whatever bias you feel like having in your project. The second method we used is called the module method. Although the pure method is perfectly fine in and of itself, it also becomes very hard to work with, especially if you have too many nested ifs. So the other method that came to mind was to use the module. What makes this method easier is that the int modifier can simply be added. As we can see here, we have the per instance random, creating a number. We have an int modifier. We add them together. And then we just do a modulo of three on it, floor it, and then we just check what the result is. If the module used is three, the only possible result of the outcomes will be zero, one, and two. So one being the middle. As such, we can do nested if statements with three possible results. We did the same thing here but with three other results. And then finally, we use the per instance random again, whatever result it may be between zero and one, and check that the 0.5 threshold to pick either the top or the bottom. So now we managed to nest more things. The last method is using trigonometry. Now I know what most of you feel when you hear the word trigonometry, but don't worry, we won't delve into it too long and we'll simplify it, we'll visualize it, all right? So if we take a look at a simple sine or even cosine function, we see that we can use this sort of cyclical function to go back and forth between values. Now there's an issue. When we go to the maximum or minimum, the function spends a lot of time in those values. So it's kind of biased. Whereas when it's around the zero value, it kind of zooms right through it. So we can't really use this function for the randomization itself. So instead, we wanted something that makes a zigzagging function. To do so, you find the arc sine of the sine function or the arc cosine of the cosine function. And you'll get something like this. I'll actually keep the previous so we can compare. So in green, we can see the zigzags I was discussing. So with the arc sine of the sine, we get a straight graph. Uh, however, the amplitudes don't reach the same maximum or minimum as the former sine or cosine. Uh, additionally, we also don't want the function to go into negatives. So you could do one of two things. You can actually make it into an absolute function and reduce the amplitudes, or you could just shift the graph upwards to make it match exactly what you want, which is what we did in this scenario here. As we can see, the function will be between zero and one at any given point. And you'll have equal amounts of chances of being at the top or at the bottom or in the middle, doesn't matter. When applying it in the material, the per instance random value will be multiplied by the int modifier again. And then finally, it will be uh, the main object of the sine function. So it'll be the X variable and the sine function. This will make it a cyclical uh, result between zero and one, or sorry, in this case, minus one and one. When we arc sine it, we'll straighten the graph. And finally, when we divide it by pi and add 0 0.5, as we've seen earlier, it will make it so that the result is always between zero and one. Next, we can use that result in the same way as we've done before using nested ifs. Again, we're using the per instance random with a 0.5 to choose which path between these two forks. And finally, we have a pure random result. The final result of this output in this case is that we can finally obtain randomness in the boxes without having to resort to spline meshing if you don't need deformation. This is a reminder that our channel is still modest and we read and appreciate all your feedback. Thank you again for watching and consider hitting the like button and subscribe for more notification on future videos. Also consider checking out and supporting us through our Patreon. Thank you and see you next time.